Okay, hi, I am back again, and this time I'm answering all you know last question. She picked a very interesting style. I actually got really excited when I saw it. First thing we're going to do, I think I have enough fabric to do that. So do I have it? Mm, let me use something else to create our base pattern. Okay, so I've put the pieces together. Now, I would like to remind you that for yours, because I'm making this as a blouse, but for yours, it's a full dress. So, what's going to happen with yours is that whatever you added here, I think we added about five, four and a half inches extra. Let me check again. Okay, about five and a half inches from the waistline. That was what we added. You take note of what you added to the length. That's from the half length, what you added. Because that's what you're using to slant this. So that when you are cutting the bottom part, that's the skirt part, instead of cutting a straight line on your skirt like you would in normal, uh, let me look for a piece to show you what I'm saying. Instead of cutting a straight line, this is your skirt, for example. Let's just, let's just say this is your skirt. Hmm? Now, instead of leaving this straight, you know it's going to slant in. So when you're making that allowance, we took five and a half there, right? So you're going to add that five and a half. That you're going to take out that five and a half and slant it to the waist. Once you do this, you whatever you have here will match with what you already have on the top. So long as you put the same allowance. So your allowance, if you're using one insulin allowance for the skirt part, you're using one insulin allowance for the top part. Then whatever you took down, like I was explaining, whatever extra you took down from the waist, because we're going to slant from here like this now. Hmm? So whatever you took down, that's what you take down when you're slanting this. Still, you make sure to add your sewing allowance here. So that means when you're measuring the length of the bottom part of that gown, you're going to add extra half inch to the top so that by the time you join these two together with a quarter inch so you're joining this to the skirt with a quarter inch you're not losing any allowance you still have the same length that you need i don't know if i explained it properly but if you need further explanation i can do that on the telegram group so let's continue with the top part so this is basically what it is We're going to continue now with our method of putting of creating corsets. We're going to take this now and replicate it on our white fabric. That is where we're starting from now. To the bottom. Remember to notch this so that you know where this is starting from. So now I'm about to get to the interesting part of this whole thing. <laughs> okay, so what is in that picture is basically pleats. Yeah, pleats, that's what they are. So I don't want us to just randomly do this and get it all rough and rugged. 
So what we're going to do now is take the longest length we have here. This is 14 and a half. And the widest width we have here. This is 19 and a half. So let's see 20 and 15. I'm taking it out. Now for that 20, we are going to be doing a lot of pleats, so we are not going to use exactly 20 for the width. So if we go back to the picture, I don't have it in front of me now, but I'm trying to see it in my head. We have one kissing pleat running down the center, and then we have about three, yeah, three knife pleats on each side of the kissing pleat. Yeah. So for the one kiss, kissing plate in the center, we're going to be taking out uh, four inches. So four inches is too much. I think it's a little too much. Let's say three inches. So we're adding three inches for the center kissing plate. And then for the rest of them, we're adding two, two inches. So six inches for the three pleats, the three knife pleats on one side. Six inches for the three knife pleats on the other side, that's 12. Then plus the three inches for the kissing pleats in the center, that's 15. So we are adding 15 inches to the original 20 inches we are taking for the width of the whole front. So if we add 15 to 20, that will be 35. So we need a width of 35. Our length is still steady. Our length was 14 and a half wide, so just we go with 15. So. We are doing 35 by 15. We have, we have our 35 by 15. You can go back and replay how I got to 35 from 20. But you're going to watch me do that now. Remember I said we are leaving out three inches for the kissing piece in the center if you divide that three inches into two we have one and a half so i'm marking out the one and a half we're leaving for the center kissing plate this is one and a half for the center kissing plate this is what we have one and a half one and a half And then for the next pleat, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, where do we, how do we space this now? I don't even have the picture <laughs> right now, but I don't want to pause and go looking for the picture. So let me do a rough guesswork. Let's see. Let's make it two inches from the center. So this is where the next pleat is starting from, the knife pleat. Remember we gave each of the knife pleats two inches. So this, see what I mean by two inches now. If you put this together, for example, you have this pleat. Can you see? So that's what I meant by giving it two inches. So the next pleat is going to be two inches after the center pleat. And this is where the pleat is going to be. So I'm going to still run that line down. I'm still running the line down. Running it down. Running it down. Running it down. So this is one pleat. And I'm going to notch so that because I'm going to do the same thing for these ones, I'm doing the same thing on both sides. So I am notching this is for our first knife pleat, and then for the next knife pleat, I'm going to take another two inches again from the center. I hope I'm right, and they are actually. Three pleats. So. So. Let's 
too. So, so again, so again. So this is for the next bit. Another two inches. And then for the last bit, for the last knife bit, I'm going another two inches again. That's just the distance between the pleats. And I'm adding another two inches for the pleats. Not to worry, I'm about to show you what this means. I need to show it as much as I can on camera here. So I'm going to notch, I'm going to notch this, notch this, to notch this one, notch this one. Okay, so that's it. Then for the center one, I'm doing this just to show you what I'm about to do. I'm marking out, kind of marking out the case and plates at the center. That's what I'm doing here. Now to confirm where our waist is, because we need, it's going to play a very big role in how we work on the how we work on the plates. I want to confirm where our waistline is. That's why I'm doing this. So this is where the waistline is. And that is at 8. So this is going to play a very important role. <coughs> I haven't loud enough. This is going to play a very important role in what we're about to do. So I'm going to mark the center. That's our kissing plate. Then I'm going to do one side. I think I'm running out of space on my camera. I'm going to do one side. So I'm opening this up now. And this is our center kissing plate. So I take this out. And I take this out and I set this like this, like a box fit at the back. This is the kissing piece. Are you saying? See what's happening? We're already doing it. This is what's at that center. Can you see? This is what is at the center. Now for the sides, remember those spaces we took. These two inches now is the distance between this split and the next split. The next two inches now is going to be like this. That's the two inches we left for this split. It's going to meet together like this. like this to form the next line now just the way i sewed this one and for that pin now we, let's pretend it's sewn so that pin is what's holding it i'm going to hold this one at this point too and maybe at another point here another point here still a pleat but i'm going to hold it from inside like this let me use a pin to demonstrate before i actually sew so i'm going to hold it like this make sure i hold one at the center that is where we mark where we marked our waist line. Make sure that there is one held there. And then we're holding another one somewhere here. I'm just doing this to show you what it looks like. Are you saying we have this? This is what you're going to have. Then the next two inches, which I notched, and the other the two inches for the pleats, because it's different. I kept two inches between each pleat and I also kept two inches for the pleat. 
So this is the distance between the pleats. And then I'm taking the other two inches for the pleats. And I'm putting it together as well. I'm just going to do one side. What you are doing on this side is the same thing you do on both sides. That was why I notched it. So that they are exactly the same. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm just pinning, but in reality, you're going to sew, sew it at the center. Where's our center again? This is our center and waistline. In reality, I'm actually going to sew these places I'm pinning. Why do they send the worst pins to Nigeria? Like you open a pin packet and more than half of it is blunt. What were they doing in the factory? Eh? Ah. Yeah. So all these places, places I'm pinning though, I am going to... I'm actually going to sew them. I'm just doing it like this so I can show you. Are you seeing it already? So this is what we're already having. This is what we're already having. You don't sew, you don't sew down everything. You leave portions of it out. You can decide to even do only the center if you want, but I'll be more comfortable holding the center. That's the waistline, and holding one other part too. That's what I prefer to do. You can decide to hold just one. So for the last one, same thing. This is the two inches distance between the pleats. And this is the actual allowance for the pleats. Two inches as well. So, same thing. I need to hold it. This is one side already. So, when I'm done, you do the same thing for the other side. Exact same thing. That is why I left all the notches. So, you follow the notching and do the exact same thing I did on this side. To that side. Okay, hold on. So, like I said, kissing pleats at the center. And knife pleats on the side. That's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and sew, and then I'll be back. Okay, so when I went off camera, I noticed that the distance between the pleats, I check my phone, I use my phone to record, so I had to check again. I understand that the distance between the own pleats is smaller than mine. It looks like it's about an inch or an inch and a half. And for mine, I used two. This is what I mean, like distance between each pleat. There seems to be about one, one and a half, I used to so, And they had more pleats. So if you want to do more pleats, all you have to do is follow the way I calculated earlier, but take into consideration more pleats. I don't know if you get what I mean. I'm hoping you do. If you don't, leave a question in the comment section. Then, what else? Okay, so this is how I sewed it. So I ended up doing just in the center. Just I just stood an inch in the center of the pleat. At this point now, it's crucial that you iron. Remember that the center pleat is a kissing pleat. All this is happening because I didn't iron. But you get it just right? Right? Hold on. Okay, I want the battle with pins. Yay! <laughs> I really do need to iron this. Hopefully, they will power before I finish this because I'm on a schedule and if i don't do this now i'll get caught up in all the work i have to do and it will be nice let me take these pins out we don't need them so i looked at the picture and then i realized i only needed to sew just the center i don't really need to hold anything else just the center and that was what i did you see it i held all the centers by about an inch same 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 thing with this one so i've covered it up now that's it i 
like I was saying, the one in the picture, so I looked at it again, the distance between the plates was smaller. They use about an inch or so, so you can make yours as small as theirs. I think it's cuter that way. But I'm going ahead with mine like this because it's mine. So that's it. Now we're going to place the pattern back on and arrange everything like it should be. I am first of all going to get a rough cut of the pattern. Can you see how everything lined up because of our calculation? It works every time. All you need to do is count the number of pleats you want to do, then the allowance or the size of the pleat rather. For this one, the size of the pleat was two. That is one inch, one inch, two inches. So I counted two inch per pleat. Now for the pleats on this side, we had three pleats. The distance between the pleats was two, two inches. That was distance. But for the calculation, we don't need that. You just need to count how many pleats you, you have there. That's one, two, three. Three pleats with two inch allowance each. So that means you're adding six inches to whatever you're doing on this side. We calculated this one, same thing. One, two, three. Three pleats. Each pleat is taking two, two inches. That's six pleats. And sorry, six inches. So six inches, six inches, twelve. And then the center pleat is taking three inches. So we added 12 to 3, that's 15. We added 15 to the total span of this pattern. I took the widest part, and that was what I used to add to that 15 inches and create the width. For the length, I took the longest part, added a little to it, and that's it. So these are knife pleats, and this one in the center is a kissing pleat. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Voila. This is what we have, this is what we have. Okay, so I am actually going to still use this. I'm not getting rid of it. It's still going to be our base. I'm going to put it on there. I'm going to put this one on top. Now, if I want to separate these further, if I want to move them further apart, I can. I'm going to do that. I'm pin. See, very blunt pins. Like if you open a packet of pins, 50% of the pins are blunt. I want them to face this way. You see what I'm doing? This way. I prefer it that way, so I'm turning it the other way. And then I can play with this. I could switch, decide to shift it just to give it, I think, to give it that um. <laughs> That pizzas. <laughs> you can play with it. So you can play around with yours. I took all the pins out. Why are you still here though? Why are you still here though? So you know what I mean? Like, you can still shift it. If you want to play around and get creative, whatever you do, make sure it holds on to the original pattern. Another blunt pin. I hold on to the original pattern. We still have this at the bottom. Still facing it to this side. Yeah, would I be without that? I think I will leave this one. Another blunt thing. See? See what I mean? 
Yeah, see what I mean? I think I'm going to leave this top part straight. I'm not going to touch it, so I'm not going to cover it. I'm just going to leave it straight. And this is the one I'm going to lose. So I'm going to move this. Just add a little drama. It's not compulsory that you do. I'm just deciding to play around with mine. Same with this one. And this one I'm doing is not compulsory, but you could just do it. Yeah, that's it. Well, once I've set everything down i'm going to sew the other side okay so just to show you how i separated the kissing plates this originally is what it is let me do one side so you can see this is what it says and now i want to open it so what i do is to push more of the pleats out are you seeing push more of the pleat out and pin so that's what i did for here 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 and here okay so i have sewn Round using the back as a guide i'll suggest that for that if you're making the exact style in the picture you part this with an interfacing cloth gum preferably that's the part this back one base so i'm going to cut out all the extras now This is all we have now. You want to get spin out. Okay, so I have been to attach what's at the bottom here. We had a total of 21, right? It will be preferable that if you cut 24 or 23 so that you can have extra fabric that will come out like this. So for this um, band, we use two and a half, which we're going to use about a quarter to sew. So you should be having at least two and a quarter here. So if we're adding two and a quarter here, that means we're adding two and a quarter to 21 which will now be 23 and a quarter so like I said you can still go for 24 in case of any it's better to cut out the extra than to have it short I think I should show it so that you can see okay I have sewn one side now remember why I said this is going to go all the way to the back this is just a sample I'll do the proper one later but by the time we sew take out our sewing allowance you see and this is what you're going to have This is what we're going to have. So, for the other one, 
the one that goes on top. You can use any side to go on top, but for this one, I'm putting this side on top. So when you're sewing this one, you're going to sew it like this to this end, and then you continue. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I've sewn it on top now. So this will drop like this. You can cut the extra out. And this is what you have. 